Hi everybody, this is Anne. Fluting is a very popular way to add exciting decoration to your wares. In pottery, if you look up the term fluting, you'll find several different definitions of this technique, from cutting grooves into the clay to creating waves along the rim section of the pot. In this video, I'll experiment with three techniques for creating fluting to my pieces. The first way involves just using your plain fingers. Every new potter is looking for simple ways to alter their bowls, and this is certainly an elegant way to do it. I began by throwing a plain bowl. I then divided the rim into fifths. I centered the trimming spinner across the rim, then marked each purple line along the spinner tool. For this design, I positioned two fingers on either side of the mark like this, and then used another finger so the clay pushed inward. I moved the wheel around and repeated this along each mark that I made, then I cleaned up the marks that I made along the rim. I like this as it is, but I thought I'd show you how to alter this even more. This time, I placed my fingers to one side of a flute and pushed the clay sideways like this. When it stiffened up, I trimmed a foot. And now it's ready to glaze. I love the symmetry and the uniqueness of the design. Now here's another way to use your fingers, along with a dowel rod. I started by throwing a bowl with a wide rim. Again, I centered the trim tool along the rim and marked the rim into eighths. I sharpened the dowel rod with a pencil sharpener. I then marked the rim along the bottom edge like this with my fingernail. I placed the tip of the dowel rod along that mark on the bottom edge and one of the marks at the top edge. I placed my fingers under the rim on each side of the dowel and pushed the clay upwards. I repeated this along each mark all the way around the bowl. I then place two fingers at each mark on the top of the rim and push the clay upward underneath the rim like this to create this beautiful effect. I then used my finger to make sure each flute was at the same height when I spun it around. When it stiffened to leather hard, I trimmed a foot and I can't wait to glaze this. Next, I'll show you how to flute a bowl using trim tools. Now here's a bowl I made with a wide rim that I threw previously. I let it dry to leather hard and began adding layers of underglaze and slip to the rim. To apply the underglaze, I just applied strokes with a dagger brush like this. I dried each layer well with a heat gun, making sure to apply a damp sponge to the rim of the bowl to keep it from drying out. I applied solid layers of milky slip over the underglaze. If you want to learn how to make the slip, check out the link above. I kept applying the slip until all the underglaze was covered and then dried it again with the heat gun. Once that was dry, I marked the bottom edge of the rim with the blunt end of my needle tool. For this bowl, I used the Diamond Core P1 V-tip carving tool. As you can see, that there are two sides of this carver. One side will create very thin cuts, and the other creates wider V-cuts. I'll carve the thin strips into the bowl like so. You can begin to see the layers of color show through as I go. 
The good thing about making these cuts is that you don't have to be careful about your spacing. You can just go for it. It's an organic nature of the cuts, like a mushroom top that I like. That makes it beautiful with just a hint of the colors underneath. Remember that the colors will darken after it's fired. Now here's another bowl I fluted previously that I made with the same tool, just turned upside down to utilize the bigger V-cut. Here I've gone ahead and bisque fired them and you can see just how using one tool can make different looks. I love how the colors show through. You can also create flutes to the outside of your pieces with carving tools. I threw this bowl previously. When it stiffened to leather hard, I layered it with solid layers of black underglaze and white slip. This time, I'm using this rounded cutter to make flutes side by side so you can see the black lines in between each cut. I was a bit disappointed that I didn't see the layers show up with that rounded tool. So as you can see, I went back and scraped the black lines down a bit to reveal the layers. Of course, I couldn't resist painting those beauties too. Finally, I thought I'd experiment with a way to flute for all the hand builders out there. I rolled a quarter inch slab on my mat between two rulers and ribbed it smooth on both sides. I took the mat off the table, then stuck the slab to the table using a rib and a rolling pin for good measure. This next part involves using a wiggle wire. This particular one is a Bill Van Gilder wire. I held it tight and flat to the table surface and wiggled it, one side at a time, under the entire slab. I love this reveal. You can vary your wiggling technique for different looks. I thought I'd make a mug with this slab. If you'd like to see my technique for making mugs, check out the link above. I position the mug template to the surface of the slab and cut it out. Here you can see how the flutes grace the surface of the piece. I made sure to use the wiggle wire under the mug as well. These are an interesting variation from what you usually think of as fluting. Now make sure you're subscribed and we'll notify you if you'd like to see the finished glaze pieces. Of course, there are many more ways to explore when creating flutes in your pottery. I hope you can use this video as a springboard for coming up with your own fluting decorations. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time in the studio.